I, I have always loved airplanes. So some of my earliest memories were going to the local airport or the Air Force Museum with my dad. I watched airplane documentaries and went to camps, built model rockets and model airplanes, and joined Civil Air Patrol as soon as I was old enough. I volunteered for everything I could to learn more, expanding my horizons through travel, learning to follow, and learning to lead. It's hard to describe how much I enjoyed it or how much it contributed to the adult that I would become. My parents were private pilots, so I grew up in a cockpit. We'd fly to Urbana for lunch or put in bay to spend a day. It really didn't matter where we were going. I just thought it was the coolest thing to get into an airplane and then be in the sky. My whole view of the world changed, and nothing else could compare to it. I couldn't wait to learn to fly myself. I began college when I turned 15 almost by accident to take private pilot ground school and introduction to aviation. Of course, when that term ended, I thought, I've already done two classes, I may as well finish the degree, which began a 12-year academic odyssey ending in a PhD. Now, that wasn't the plan when I started, but I love learning more about aviation, and it made sense to just keep going. Between school, work, and civil air patrol, I found the time for flight lessons. And my biggest obstacle was I didn't have a driver's license. <laughs> I really didn't enjoy driving, and I had to convince myself that it was the only way to get to the airport to fly. <laughs> so in the end, I suppose cars have their place in society, too. <laughs> As I was growing up, I had heroes. They weren't athletes or race car drivers, though there's nothing wrong with that. My heroes after my dad, who was the coolest guy I knew, were pilots, engineers, and entrepreneurs. And dad was all three. I know that I had an advantage growing up in Dayton because I could see what people like the Wright brothers and Charles Kettering and so many others were able to accomplish, really changing their world. What they did enabled people to dream big and set goals that not even a generation before were still unthinkable. Charles Lindbergh completing the first solo transatlantic flight. Amelia Earhart becoming the first person to cross both the Atlantic and the Pacific by air. Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. Each generation building on the grit, determination, and spirit of the one before. I could go to the Air Force Museum, see something tangible, and think, I can do that too. Now, it might sound odd for a kid to be so excited by people who had lived a half a century or more before he was born, but to me, what they did was just as epic as Washington at Valley Forge. In their own time, the Wrights, Lindbergh, Earhart, and Armstrong were more famous than kings and presidents. They competed for and won trophies, prizes, and awards, risking their capital and lives, doing things that were impossible, until suddenly they weren't. When the Wright brothers returned to Dayton in 1909 after demonstrating their flying machine in America and Europe, they were greeted as conquering generals who had just won a war. They had done what none before them had dared, and the celebrations surrounding their achievements foreshadowed the great global celebrations that would be the hallmark of aviation and aerospace for over a half a century to come. To me, what they did wasn't part of some storied past just relegated to museums or the pages of history books. Rather, it was the foundation for the adventures of my generation. Yet, somehow, the thrill of aviation slowly became blasé. <laughs> we began to take it for granted, a utilitarian tool almost to be dreaded if direct contact was required. We seemingly forgot the great strides in technology that had come from our past pursuits of aviation challenges and that now benefit all parts of our lives. The magic was almost gone, and all that remained was a fading glow visible only to those who knew where to look. But then something wonderful happened. What in my view is nothing less than the rebirth and democratization of aviation for a new generation. Unmanned aerial systems, remotely piloted aircraft, drones, Whatever you call them, they've been around in some form for over 100 years. But almost without warning, a convergence of advances in technology, regulatory development, and commercial innovation have drawn them from the realms of military asset or child's toy to a quickly evolving commercial tool. New uses seem to appear for them almost daily in media, real estate, inspections, and emergency response. Really, there's too much variety for me to list now. However, even with all of the progress and innovation, there's still the need to focus the potential that all the drones offer. We should return to the grand challenges of aviation's past. Some of these coveted, almost mythical prizes and trophies still exist and are awarded. But in my view, there's a growing need for recognitions 
that expressly drive drone innovation for those with the interest, determination, and wherewithal to again push the envelope and do what is thought impossible. My vision for a challenge worthy of the spirit of flight is the development of a civil unmanned aircraft capable of a journey from Dayton, the birthplace and engine of so much of the history of aviation, to Los Angeles, that other great bastion of American aeronautical innovation. Now, it may not seem like this is a difficult task, given how easily we cross oceans and continents today by air. But for a civil drone to complete a journey of this magnitude, a distance of almost 2,000 miles, will require significant regulatory development and impressive technical achievement. Years of diligent and committed effort have already laid the foundation for such a monumental feat. Testing is underway for unmanned aircraft that are capable of flight beyond the side of the operator. This is a task that stretches our capabilities in system communication, automation, endurance, and collision avoidance. The work requires the integration of government, academia, industry, and the public across a broad range of technologies and in the best traditions of aviation and aerospace. Just as with the first flight, the Atlantic crossing, and the moonshot, the focus and sense of competition provided by the goal will spur rapid progress as capabilities are developed and lessons learned. However, just as with our past pursuits, the challenge is not an end unto itself, but rather the catalyst for advances that we can't even imagine today. Aviation and the technologies that spun out from it made our modern world. And the dawn of unmanned systems has the same ability to create new wonders for generations to come. I can see the future reflected in our past. I could see when I was a kid that loved airplanes, when I was in college preparing for jobs that didn't yet exist, and today when the promise of air travel for all and personal air vehicles and air taxis is on the horizon. However, we must again dream big to reach our goals, not just corporately with the promise of financial gain or as a government seeking to improve economic development. We are individuals viewing aviation's next great epoch and must personally support it, cheer, and savor the moment knowing that we are living out history. Fear has a purpose if it keeps us from taking foolhardy risks, but it has no place in my world if it keeps us from realizing the dreams of our youth. Let's inspire the next generation with our actions, show them that there's nothing extraordinary about us that isn't in them also, and help them find the thrill of adventure that has always been aviation's real driving force. We can't simply assume that technology marches forward regardless of our interest or indifference. Just imagine how much better the future will be for you or your children in an air taxi traversing the sky with a freedom so far only felt by those few who have earned their pilot wings in the short flash of aviation's history. How could you not be excited? As I look back at that kid I was, I realize that I was blessed to have my parents, to grow up in Dayton, and to believe in dreams. To me, that above all else is what aviation and aerospace are. Dreams that take on the form of reality. True, drones do offer tangible benefits and financial returns, but they also have the potential of, and already are, igniting a new enthusiasm for flight in all aspects of society. Let's do our part to foster the next generation of aviation pioneers by never allowing ourselves to be limited to small goals or what is easily within reach. Let's always listen to the dreams of the kid in us, and once again, dare to do the impossible.